got some past exam questions here on atomic structure and isotope. So if you wanted to have a go at these first, the link to the PDFs in the description. So just download them, have a go, and then watch the video for the answers. So first question is a multiple choice question. How many electrons are there in this magnesium 2 plus ion? So the trick here really is it's got a 2 plus charge. So there are two fewer electrons in the ion than in the atom. So the answer was 10, so it's A. Question two, which statement is correct from this information about the two isotopes? So can we say that the relative atomic mass of the element is 47.61 from this information? No, you can't because we've only got information about 33% of the isotopes. You need all 100% of the isotope information to get that. Isotope B has more protons than isotope A. That's definitely wrong because isotopes have to have the same number of protons. Um, option C, isotope B has fewer neutrons than isotope A. Well, that's wrong as well because isotope B has the larger mass number so the relative isotopic mass of isotope B is 145. Yes, that is true. That's its mass number. So D was the answer. So question three, we've got the mass spectrum for element X and we've got to work out the relative atomic mass of X. So what we're going to do is we're going to sum the product of the relative abundance and the M over Z value or relative isotopic mass. So I'll just sort of colour code these and then I'll write that up. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. I've taken the relative abundance of the peak and multiplied it by the m over z value, which is also the relative isotopic mass, by the way. So that times that plus that times that, all over 100 because these are percentages. That gives me a calculated value of 85.5566. So to two decimal places, that's 85.56. The identity of element X now, so we're just looking for the closest match on the periodic table for that relative atomic mass, and the answer is rubidium. So number four, nice and straightforward, relative mass, relative charge, and position within the atom of the fundamental particles. So protons and neutrons both have a relative mass of one. Electron, I always just give the one over 2,000 fraction. Relative charge, we need the sign and the number, so plus one for the proton zero for the neutron and negative one for the electron and these are both in the nucleus. Question five, antimony exists as a mixture of isotopes. What is meant by the term isotopes? So we must give this definition exactly like this, atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Okay, so the next part, different isotopes of antimony have the same chemical properties, explain why. Well, chemical properties are determined by the electrons in the outer shell. So both of the isotopes will have the same electron configuration or the same number of electrons in the outer shell. Okay, so the next part, complete the table to show the atomic structure of um, antimony 121. So obviously we need to go to the periodic table to find out its atomic number, which is 51. So that's how many protons it's got. It's an atom, not an ion. There's no charge, so it needs to have the same number of electrons. And the neutron number is determined by the difference between the mass number and the proton number. So that comes out at 70. Okay, so the next part, the relative atomic mass of antimony is 121.8. Define the term relative atomic mass. So again, this must be given to the letter like this. So it's the weighted mean mass of an atom compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So you notice there's three marks going for that. So the three things we're looking for here is the weighted mean mass of an atom compared to 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon-12. So that's how those points, those three points would be scored. And the final part of this question, a sample of antimony, reminder that the atomic, relative atomic mass is 1 1.8. Analyze, found to consist of two isotopes 60%, 121, and one other. Determine the mass number of the other isotope in the sample. So the first thing we'll do is establish that the other isotope um, is 40%. And if you remember what we did before when we had to calculate the relative atomic mass, this time we've got it. So 
equals the percentage abundance, so 60% times 1 to 1, plus 40% of this unknown. We're working in percentages, so it's all over 100. So the next thing I'm going to do is take that 100 over to the other side, so that becomes 1 to 1, 8, 0, equals 60 times 1 to 1, plus 40 times unknown. So that 60 times 1 to 1 is 7 to 6, 0. So we'll take that over to the other side and subtract it from 1 to 1, 8, 0 now. So that gives us 4,920 is equal to 40 times the unknown value. So we're now going to divide that um, 4,920 by the 40 to get the unknown. And that gives us a value of 123. Okay, so question six. Silicon and potassium both exist as several isotopes. Define the term relative isotopic mass now. So last time we had relative atomic mass. So here's the definition for relative isotopic mass. So relative isotopic mass deals with an individual isotope of an atom. So you, you need to say mass of an isotope or atom compared to 1 12th the mass of an atom of carbon 12. Okay, so the next part of the question, complete the table below for an atom and an ion of two different isotopes of potassium. So the key thing here is they are isotopes of potassium, so they're both going to have 19 protons. Get that from the periodic table. So the neutrons for isotope 39, just remember there's 19 there, so the difference between those two numbers is the neutrons, so it's 20. And the next question so we've got 19 protons but only 18 electrons so this is going to be a k plus ion but we need to give its mass number because we've got 19 protons and 22 neutrons and they add up to 41 so that would be needed as well question seven similar sort of question to what we've seen before complete the table for protons neutrons and electrons for this isotope of tin so we've got the periodic table and we get tin has an atomic number of 50, so it's got 50 protons. There's no charge in it, so it's 50 electrons. And 118 minus 50 gives us the neutron number 68. And the second part of the question, um, in terms of subatomic particles, so protons, neutrons and electrons, how would those two isotopes differ? So the 120 isotope of tin has two more neutrons than the 118 isotope. Next question, complete the table again, so a very similar sort of question, for this, this time for magnesium 24 and 25. So they've both got 12 protons, um, neither of them are charged, so they're going to have the same number of electrons. And obviously the neutrons is the difference between the mass number and the proton number. So we've got 12 neutrons in the first one and 13 in that one. Another calculation of a relative atomic mass now, but this time we've got to give our answer to four significant figures. Okay, so I've put the numbers into the calculation. So we've seen this a couple of times now where we take the isotopic mass, multiply it by the relative abundance, and we just sum those. So we get um, a calculated value of that. And so to four significant figures, that's 24.33. Okay, so another one of these questions where we've got to fill in the table of protons, neutrons and electrons. So we're told this time that the atomic number is 74, so that's the protons. There's no charge on this, so it's got 74 electrons as well. And the difference between the 184 and the 74 is the number of neutrons, 110. What's used as the standard measurement of relative isotopic mass? We've seen it in the definition, the carbon-12 isotope. Okay, so the last question. Bromine's got two isotopes, 79.81. Relative atomic mass is 79.9. Calculate the percentage of bromine-79 atoms in this sample of bromine. So the way I do this is I sort of treat it like a tug of war. So if you think that that's like the rope, I've got my two isotopes, 79 and 81. Okay, so just keeping the um, tug of war analogy going, the little flag that determines who's winning is sitting just slightly closer to the 79 isotope. So that's the relative atomic mass, 79.9.
So if we think about the sort of the 79 isotope is pulling the average towards itself. That's how I like to think about it. So it's pulling away from the 81. So you can see that its pull is 1.1. And that's because it's managed to go from 81. It's pulling the average and it stops at 79.9. If we'd been asked about this isotope, that's pulling in the opposite direction. It's only pulling by 0.9 away from that 79. Okay, so to turn that into a percentage, the, the pull, the 1.1 over the total difference of 2 times 100, that is a 55% abundance.